elaborate a little more on next time you can. Um, but we'll, we'll go over it, and we'll do the best we can, and it's going to be good. It's on the Holy One of Israel. So let me get a few announcements for those that missed um, earlier. Let's see, we're on June. Um, tomorrow is worship team practice, so um, if anything changes there, I'll let you know, but it will be 7 o'clock tomorrow night. And um, then, try to see what we have coming up. That might be it for the month of June. Uh, July, uh, like I was telling during prayer, uh, we do have some special speakers coming in for July. Uh, tentatively, we have on the 15th, we have Brother Larson coming in from Bolivia. And then I believe the 19th is the day we're trying to get um, Brother Angelo, but we still got to check his schedule since he is coming from Africa. Uh, so we got to see when he can make it up to Illinois. Um, so, and then possibly the Alexanders may come that same time to, to share a little bit with us also. So we're kind of shooting for the 19th, but it's not set in stone yet. So just be praying for them um, as we're getting them settled in. And then VBS is coming up, so um, just be ready for whatever may come with VBS. I am excited this year for what's to come. Uh, it is the last day of July, so July 31st, and then August 1st and 2nd. So it's a Friday, Saturday, with the big finale on Sunday. So it's going to be a good time. So uh, we're going to get the word out. We'll get a little more information so you can get the word out. So uh, be listening for that. And I think that is it. And be praying for Pastor Brian as he's out tonight. He is actually in Missouri right now. Um, he is he is actually performing a funeral tonight of a friend of his from way back when he worked in the mines. And uh, it's a wonderful opportunity. His daughter wanted him to actually do the funeral. And so he went down today and he's down there right now and um, ministering and also um, being a witness for Christ to all his um, friends from way back when he used to work in the mine. So um, keep praying for him tonight as he's doing that. I'm thankful for the opportunity that he's getting to do that. And see people, you know, hope brought back. And I pray there's a lot of restoration and just people's eyes opened. And I, and I pray that Pastor Brian gets to see the impact he had on people's lives. And I pray that it encourages them and it, 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 it is, he sees what he did in the time he was there in Missouri, that um, he did impact people's lives. And I pray he gets to see that and it's an encouragement to him. So I'm really praying he gets something out of it too as he goes out and sees what an awesome impact he has had for Christ in people's lives. So God is so good. He is faithful. Well, we haven't taken the offering yet, so let's do the offering tonight. Um, would someone want to help me with that? Rebecca, would you want to help? I didn't get the plate out yet if you'd want to grab it. Um, but just get your your offering ready to go, and we'll pass around the plate tonight. God is so good. And, you know, daily I'm reminded of how faithful God is, how true His Word is, and how alive His Word is. And, you know, every time I pray, I just, I just envision just how powerful His Word is. His word is. When you speak His word, you're speaking life. You're speak. It, it has to. It, it, we say the verse that it cannot return void. It has to accomplish the thing it sent forth. You know. You know. We say those things, but it has to perform. It has to do the thing that we send it. It's a powerful living word that we speak forth. So when we when we know the word and we speak the word, we got to have that revelation that it's absolute truth. It's life. You know, we're the ones in the land of the living. We're not the living dead, right? We're in the lands of the living. You know, that is us. So if we're alive, we're fully alive in Christ. Amen? Fully alive. We recognize that His Word is so true that it is powerful. It's living. It's alive. It's like I don't have enough words to express, you know, in the English language to just to say how alive His Word is, how impactful it is on our lives. And when we can get that revelation, it will transform us. His absolute truth that we can stand on. His firm foundation. So, so just let it be a joy as you give to the Lord tonight. Just let it be a joy. You guys have already taken it, but 
it's a joy because it's like you realize how alive you can be, what you, uh, the restoration that's in your own life, the deliverance that's been in our lives. You know, such freedom in Him, and we we give it back to Him, we glorify Him, we love on Him, and we're obedient to His Word. And that's this is one way of being obedient in, in God's to God's Word. Amen. Well, Lord, bless those that gave tonight. Just return it 30, 60, 100 full, God. Just bless them. Bless them so they can be used and give you the glory and just do great and mighty things in you and through you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I think I got all that right. So tonight, we are on Lesson 11. Woohoo! We are on the Holy One of Israel. So Kadesh Yisrael. All right? We'll see if we get that right. So... Let's start by going through it, and then we'll kind of elaborate a little bit. Did everybody get their papers? I don't want to miss anybody. Okay. So let's just start by reading here. And anytime you guys want to interject or add anything, feel free, okay? This is Bible study, so we're pretty laid back on Wednesday night. So if you have something or the Holy Spirit's like, yeah, or he brings up a verse that, you know, about this topic that you're like, yeah, there's that verse or just something, you know, feel free, raise your hand, and I'll call on you, and We'll just inter interact and interject here, okay? So it's going to be good. All right, the title, Holy One of Israel, emphasizes God's uniqueness, otherness, and mystery, as well as his call to his people to become holy as he is holy. So God is a holy God, all right? So we're establishing that. Okay, so the Israelites were to be set apart for God, okay? So here's the Israelites. This is God's people. So they're set apart for God. That's one thing. They're not just everybody in the land. They're, they're people that set apart, set aside for his glory, okay? Uh, they're devoted to his service, so that means their lives are his. What they do, um, how they carry about their days, what everything that encompasses in their life is all for God now. They're devoted to him. And they're committed to honoring his character, <laughs> by reflecting it in all their relationships. So how they respond to, whether it's their family, their friends, their neighbors, they, every relationship that they have should reflect the character of God. And so you're gonna have to know what the character of God is. And, and we find that in the Word. You find out who He is, because then you, when you know who He is, you know who you are, and you can see yourself in His eyes. So we gotta find out what is His character, because He expects us, as a holy God, to live accordingly. So we're supposed to know his character, and we have to reflect that to one another. So when we're talking to one another, we're interacting, we need to know how to respond with one another. And one thing is love. You know, God is love. He's not a God that does love. God is love. Okay, so that's, that's a, you know, that would resemble who God is. That shows who God is. So now we know from the word of God, when it says God is love, now we know we are to interact with one another in love. Whether we are in a disagreement or we're not, you know, at a difference or whether things are going great, we always need to walk in love with one another. And, and something like that doesn't mean that someone walks all over us, does it? It doesn't. It means we walk in a loving manner. And, you know, sometimes we say the truth hurts. The truth is life. It's it's life changing, but it's in love. And so we got to remember to do that. So that's just one vantage point. So, set apart for God, devoted to Him, and we are to um, honor His character by showing it in all that we do. All right, in the New Testament, Jesus was recognized as the Holy One of God by demons who were threatened by His power and His purity. As believers, we are called to reflect the character of Christ, to be holy as He even as he is holy. So he is a holy God. And so now we as his people need to be holy also, okay? All right, so when you pray to the Holy One of Israel, you are praying to the God whose holiness not only encompasses his separation from evil, but his power, his knowledge, his justice, his mercy, his goodness, and love. So this is a holy God. Goodness and love. So this is a holy God. Goodness and love. This is a holy God. Goodness and love. This is a holy God. Alright, that's okay. We'll get it figured out. <laughs> In 
Jesus name. <laughs> so, are you guys all awake now? <laughs> if you weren't, you are now. <laughs> so, um, his holiness is all these things. So, he he's a powerful guy. He has all, all knowledge. He is he's a god of justice, of mercy, and goodness and love. He is all those things, and he he's just he is holy. He is it. He is what holy is. Okay, and so we have to know that. And that since he is that holy God, we are holy now because we are his children, we are the children of God, and so our lives need to reflect that. So let's go to our key scripture tonight. It's Leviticus 19, 1 and 2. It's in the middle of your page. It says, The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the entire assembly of Israel and say to them, Be holy, because I, the Lord your God, am holy. And I have a scripture I want to share. We'll see. Um, let's go to, real quick, just to Isaiah, if you want to turn there or write it down. Isaiah 48, verse 17. Isaiah 48, 17. Isaiah 48, 17 says, Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou should go. So he, he declares that he's the Holy One, that he is the Lord, that he teacheth us, he leads us, and he shows us the way we're to go. So as God's people, we want to seek his face. And we know God is a jealous God. He loves us. And we don't ever want to get our attention on something else that puts something else first, idols or things. You know, he is He is the Lord. And we are to be holy. And so we're supposed to have lives that are holy and pure before him. Okay? All right, so let's go on to read um, down below here. And I think, I don't the name of scripture. This is, yeah, Leviticus. Okay, so the questions we're going to go over at the end have to do with these scriptures. So be thinking, like, what do you see in the scriptures here? What's kind of the, the theme, the repetition? What is, when he says, I'm holy, kind of be seeing where it says that and why is it saying it there, okay? So kind of get that in your mind as we're reading these, okay? And, um, and then we'll do the questions at the end. So, God reveals his name in scripture. So, he is declaring who he is. He's holy. So, here we go. The Lord said to Moses, and this is Leviticus 19. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the entire assembly of Israel and say to them, be holy because I, the Lord your God, am holy. So, he's speaking to the entire, his, his children at that time. The whole Israelis, the Israelites, they're his people, okay? So, he, he's telling them. Be holy, okay? I set you guys apart, okay? You're my people now. I, I I am God. I'm holy. And now I, you are expected to be a holy people, okay? So now he's going to go into this. So each of you must respect his mother and father. And you must observe my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. Do not turn to idols or make gods of cast metal for yourselves. I am the Lord your God. When you reap the harvest of your land, do not reap to the very edges of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. Do not go over your vineyard a second time or pick up the grapes that have fallen. Leave them for the poor and the alien. I am the Lord your God. On the second page. Do not steal. Do not lie. Do not deceive one another. Do not swear false witness. Uh, do not swear falsely by my name so, and so profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. Do not defraud your neighbor or rob him. Do not hold back the wages of a hired man overnight. Do not curse the death or put a stumbling block in front of the blind. But fear your God. I am the Lord. Do not pervert justice. Do not show partiality to the poor or favoritism to the great. But judge your neighbor fairly. Do not go about spreading slander among your people. Do not do anything that endangers your neighbor's life. I am the Lord. Do not hate your brother in your heart. Rebuke your neighbor frankly so you will not share in his guilt. And do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against one of your people. But love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. So, 
you know, he's in a constant theme here where he is declaring that I am the Lord. I am the Lord. And we know that God is holy. So he's declaring, I am the Lord. I am holy. I am your God. I, I, I'm it. <laughs> Seek me. Follow me. All in everything that you do. Relationships. And in all these things, it's, it's covering, you know, when it comes into relationships that I am the Lord your God in some manner. And he's declaring that he wants he wants our our zeal our passion to be him completely and he is the holy god and so our lives are to reflect that all right let's go down let's go over a little bit of what the word means a little bit so understanding the name so kadosh i'm hoping that's how you say it kadosh is hebrew for holy one okay so it's the two names who is this? Kedosh Yisrael. So Kedosh is Hebrew for Holy One. A title for God that appears more frequently in the book of Isaiah, though it also appears in some of the other prophets. Notably Hosea, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Habakkuk. And in Psalm and Job. So this is, uh, these are the Old Testament. So it emphasizes God's otherness, <coughs> separateness, and mystery. And the term most frequently used for holy in the New Testament is hagios. Okay, so it you guys will know, you know, by reading the Old Testament, how they're always declaring you know, who God is, and they they recognize who the Holy One is. And you'll see in those the the books that they're talking about, where He is this great God, and, and they're talking about the mystery and um, how He's. He is like none other God, and they really declare his holiness and who he is. He's, he's separate from any other God that they could ever have, and he is it. He is the Holy One. It says, what is it? He is the Lord, the Lord our God, the Lord is um, one. So he is the one Lord of, over the people. All right, so let's continue. To understand the title, Holy One of Israel, Kedosh Yisrael. We need to first understand that holiness is grounded in God's nature. So it's, it's who he is. It refers not to one of his attributes, but the totality of his perfection. In his holiness, God exists above and apart from the world he has made. So, you know, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Before there was um, time and space and everything created here, he was it. He was here. He was holy and he's always been holy and will always remain holy. And a holy God came in and made an expanse of time and creation and brought it forth for a people that could love him. And so since he's holy, we became holy and he created. But from the very beginning of him, which is infinite <laughs> he's, he's always has always been there's no beginning to him there's no ending to him he has always been holy and he has come in and allowed us to be his holy people because he is and because we're associated with him now we get to be a holy people which is awesome okay so let's go a little further here um yes here we go things time places and people so things, times, places, people, whatever, other created beings became holy by virtue of their connection to God. Thus the people of Israel became holy because God had chosen them. And you know that we're a chosen people, a royal priesthood. You guys know that verse. You know, that's a holy God that has set us aside for that. Um, their um, holiness was to be expressed and maintained through ritual practices and adherence to moral laws which set them apart for the service of God. And, yeah, let me, let me read a little bit more and I can show some. It is important to realize that God's holiness involves not just separation from sin, but his absolute hostility toward it, or his hostility toward sin also. Um, Christ ultimately bridged the chasm between God and sinful human beings by making himself the perfect offering for our sins. Believers are called to be holy as he is holy and are enabled to imitate Christ by the grace of the Holy Spirit. So 
we are through Christ Jesus, we are able to be holy, and He has made that way for us. Otherwise, we would have died in our sins in a holy God. He would have been just to allow us to die in our sins, but He loved us so much that He allowed Christ to come in into our, you know, our time and space and say, yes, He's going to be made that atonement for us so that we can be with the God who, you know, created us because he loves us. He created us so we could live for him, glorify him, love him, and be his people. And so he made that way through Jesus Christ. And so and so it said not the separation from sin, but the hostility towards it too. And so we gotta be a people when it does come to sin that we're not we're not patty kicking around, but we're also like, yeah, sin is sin, right? And we're we're not gonna put up with sin. You know, we're we're gonna say adios and get out of there you know we're not going to allow sin to come and rule our, and reign in our lives we we are a holy people set aside um i'm going to go over some verses real quick that kind of go about our own lives about how we're to be holy kind of um seeing our part on that and i'm just going to read down some so if you guys just want to listen because you know he's called us to be holy we're holy because he's holy but we have to remain as a holy people and so um, I'm going to read down just some real quick, and then we'll go over the questions. Uh, 2 Corinthians 7.1, if you want to write down, you can. Um, 2 Corinthians 7.1, it says, Therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates the body and the spirit, perfecting holiness out of the reverence of God. So that tells me we need to have a, a fear of God, a healthy fear of the Lord, which is in, it's not like fear like when you tell the, you know, the enemy's fleeing in fear where he's fleeing in terror. No, it's a fear of God that is a healthy fear of saying, yes, I honor who you are, God, and I want to I want to obey your word. I want to do your word. I want a life that's holy and blameless before you. And so, it, you know, in our lives, we come up against things that we really need to keep our hearts right, um, live the word of God. And so it, it may be a daily thing. You know, we really got to watch what comes in, what we allow in. And so we have to live a life that is pure before God. And, you know, that's kind of out. <laughs> a lot of people, you know, it's kind of out the window these days. And our, our, our society and our morals are going way down. But we, it doesn't change for God's people. We have to be a pure a people that are pure before God, blameless and holy before Him. All right, Hebrews 12, 14 says, Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. No one will see the Lord unless you are a holy person. So we must, it's a work to, you know, we must stay in the scriptures. We must keep, you know, our lives aligned according to the word of God. And that means we got to dig in the word. we got to constantly be in the word. Let the word renew our minds constantly, every day, and live it out. I don't know about you, but I can tell when I read the word and if I'm kind of not maybe reading as much as I should, and you kind of gear and ramp it up a little bit, you're like, yeah, I notice. <laughs> I notice God's word and the impact it has in your life. And you're like, yeah. And you just realize how how it changes you so much, you know. And it is it is working in your life when you're reading it. And maybe the days when you feel like maybe you're just like reading it, and you're just like, I'm just reading it, reading it. But maybe you're not getting much out of it or something. It is still the life-giving word, and it is it is impacting your life, and it is powerful. So we must receive it by faith every time we read it, and know God is faithful. All right, let's go on the next one. Um, I'll kind of go quick. First Peter 1, 15 through 16. First Peter 1, 15 through 16. But just as he who called you is holy, saying, God who is calling you to be holy. So be holy in all you do, for it's written, be holy because I am holy. So we must live a life that is holy to God. Alright, next one, 2 Timothy 1.9. There's a lot here, so I'm just going to go down. 2 Timothy 1.9. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of His own purposes and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus, Jesus before the beginning of time. Um, let's see. Um, 
Psalm 199, how can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. How nice is that? That could be a good word for some young people these days. <laughs> how do you expect me to stay pure these days? With all the stuff I see on TV and all the stuff I hear on the radio talking about this and that, how am I supposed to be pure? Psalm 199 says, by living according to your word. So get the word in you. That's what we got to tell them. Get your Bible. Read it. Get it in you. Feed yourself. <laughs> get it. Get it in you. Okay? All right. Psalm 139, 23 through 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. This is a great thing to say, Lord. Just search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me. That's a big thing to tell yourself, huh? Okay, God. Test me. <laughs> Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me. And lead me in the way of everlasting. Now, that is a person of humility. True humility. And God can only use people truly that are truly humble before him. He can work with that person. We know that around here. If you're humble, God can work with that. All right. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. That's Philippians 2.5. Have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Um, let's see. Um, okay, let's get that. Off, I'm just going to kind of touch on some. They say... Um, Offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Um, do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure. Really? That started off with grumbling and complaining and arguing? <laughs> yeah. So it says, do everything without grumbling and arguing so that you become, may become blameless and pure. Children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. So that's Philippians 2.14. Philippians 2.14-16. Uh, let me just hit in a few more and then we'll get to the questions. Let's see. Says, I will show the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations. The name you have profaned among them. Then the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the sovereign Lord, when I am proved holy through you before their eyes. So that's in Ezekiel. All right. I think that's it on that. So I just want to share some. So it's very important that we recognize that He is holy, we are holy, and it takes something also on our part to be a people that um, continue to live pure and holy lives before God. And, and that we have to, you know, get the word in us and, you know, be those that live his character, share who he is with people, and be devoted to him in everything that we do. All right, when we go to our questions, so this is the time where you guys jump in, all right? So don't be shy tonight, all right? You guys ready? All right, now Leviticus 19, uh, number one, that's the one we went over earlier, where it had this, the declared I am the Lord God. It says, God links his, this is number one, God links his commandments to his name. Why do you think he keeps reminding the people that he is the Lord your God? I'm I think, I was questioning this myself, because I think it's because the ones that he says it immediately after are ones that might be more difficult for the average person to listen to. And it's just a reminder that, you know, you're supposed to do it because I said so. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a good, that's a good vantage point. I like that. Amen. Amen. Does anybody else have a, another vantage point? Thank you for sharing that. Sister. Uh, I, I, say, well, I have some little obsession with the, the new covenant. They purchased us and bought us. Right, is that we're his? Amen. Amen. We're his. We're his. He's reminding us to serve him. Anybody else want to get Rebecca? Good answers, you guys. Yeah, and he's declaring, I'm your Lord, and, and he even touches on the relationships. Um, I'll have to go back to the page. And a lot of them, I think, 
are have to do with even relationships where he's saying he's wanting them to see, hey, I I, I want that relationship with you. You know, we want us. He is our first love. You know, we need to get back to our first love. And so even in that, um, when it talks about anything in relationships made with other people or with God, he even touches on that a bit and said he wants to to be reminded that even in those relationships and think I am still the Lord your God. So you guys gave wonderful answers. And um, even when I was looking over it, I'm like, what is the correlation here? But, you know, he's he's saying, uh, I am your God. I, I, I want you guys to declare that I'm, I'm the Lord. Relationships are important to him, and we are to have a relationship with him. And he is a holy God. And so we need to keep that relationship in that manner a holy relationship and so we have to have a life that shows that that reflects that so that we can remain in communion with him in that relationship with him and so that is um, our heart's desire so two if this were the only passage of scripture you have ever 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 read this was it okay Leviticus 19 the whole chapter what would it lead you to believe about God's character so you may have to go through it and that's fine if, if you were on a stranded island, <laughs> and this is the only scripture you had, that right there, all that, Leviticus 19 there, what what would it lead you to believe about his character? What's, what's something? Brother Kenny. Well, that his, his mindset isn't just about us, but about everybody. And Amen. We're taking consideration of others. <laughs> Amen. That is a great answer. So he, he cares about us. He's taking others into consideration. He wants us to know that I'm your God. I am here. I care for you. I love you. And this is how you need to treat people. This is how, this is what not to do, what to do. Follow my ways. You know, you'll prosper. You'll flourish. You'll be blessed if you live according to the ways that I have laid out before you. Okay, anybody else? Who wants to be? Maria. his character and who he is into other people. You know, if we truly saw that we have that we can impact other people's lives, but we have to have our lives in order. And we we should want that. We should want to desire to please God by being a living sacrifice, by making, you know, our lives become in line with his word. But you know, not seeing it as a legal thing, you know, not you know, religious, like, oh, I have to do this, this, and this, but it's because we want to please the Father, we want to please Him, and we want to see others transformed and set free and not have to live by the ways of the world or what they're doing. You know, if you want to please God, you're, you're going to make the right choices, and, you know, just like, you know, the things you, you know, the alcohol and the wine and all that, yeah, you're going to want to, you're going to want to put those things that would cause, a, you know, a, a division between you and God that would cause you know, maybe sin to enter in or something. You don't want to even go near that stuff because your heart is to please the Father. Amen, amen. Reflection of his character. What's that? And, and I'm, I'm thankful you got to speak into something in their, in their lives. That's awesome. That's awesome. Amen, amen. All right, anybody else? You guys are doing fantastic. Anybody else? What What is one thing that leads you to believe God's character? Does anybody want to be brave? Anybody else? Okay. All right, I'll move along. 
if you, if you change your mind, let me know. <laughs> all right, number three. Notice that all the commands involve relationships. What kind of relationships are highlighted in this passage? So, what's some of you guys could be picked up? Brother Kenny. Uh, father, father. father and mother. Father and mother. Neighbor. Neighbor. Uh, brother. Brother. Aliens. Aliens. <laughs> Not the ooh, aliens, but. <laughs> Did you have one, Sister Rebecca? Amen. Amen. How to have right relationships with people, how to handle situations, um, or, you know, even if you're doing business with someone, how do you handle that relationship in a godly manner? You know, um, and it talked about how to handle, you know, things with the poor, those that are wealthy. You know, God gives us, uh, you know, the wisdom on how to handle things, whether it's straight out told us or it is just the wisdom and knowledge of God and the understanding that he gives us. He will give it to us. Um, anybody else have anything in that? Any other relationships? I think you guys probably touched on quite a bit of them. But it has to do with relationships. It has to do with people and how we interact with one another. All right, number four, read through these commandments prayerfully. So if we've already kind of gone through them. Asking the Holy Spirit to show you where you need to make changes in order to live according to God's guidelines for holiness. So what areas in your life are highlighted? So as you're going through this, you know, as we read them, there may have been something that the Holy Spirit popped out and said, Lori, I need to, I need to work on that area. Or, you know, it, whatever they, you know, he may have brought up, and you could, you allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Um, you know, they went over quite a few things about. Well, it'll start up on the uh, page of this. The page it said, at the top it says, "Do not steal. Do not lie. Do not deceive one another." Um, you know. E you know, any of those things, maybe someone's struggling with that. It's like, okay, God, I, I need, you know, the Holy Spirit saying, hey, you're, you're kind of, you're doing something in this area. You need to stop that. My word says this, you know. So just get your heart right. Whatever, if he's revealing something to you tonight, just, you know, repent and turn from it. That's what the word says. So get do that <laughs> full circle and get your heart right before God. Repent from it, turn from it and um, start living for God and doing what the Word of God says. All right, number five. What relationships in your life need attention, repentance, or forgiveness? So I don't know if anybody wants to share on that. Mariela. I would say my first get saved and you have all that passion and zeal and then, and then over time sometimes you get into things of church and you kind of just go through the motions and things and I pray people get hungry, more hungry for the things of God and are seeking his heart and what he wants versus what we're wanting and and just you know hearing those things you know you're seeking his heart you're, you're not like but what about this in my life and that want to do this why aren't you doing this in my life and uh, you know you know me 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 you know it's you know whereas we our heart should be how can I how can I draw closer to you God? and and I'm sorry that I I broke your heart in this area God I and I, I repent and I turn God I want to be close to you that should be our heart 
at all times and our desire to please him, to please the Father. And in this society we live in, when it's all about I, 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 it, you know, you really have to seek after him. So I pray we can get be more of a passionate people for God and remember him as our, our first love and really just seek to please him. Amen. Does anybody else want to share on that one, on number five? So just be, you know, even, you know, you may have something that popped up in your, your own life, um, your own spirit name tonight about that. So, you know, just, just make it right. Just make it right tonight. Amen. Number six, how can you pursue being generous, loving, honest, truthful, and just toward those in your sphere of influence? Think of some specific examples. So how can you, think about your own life, how can you pursue um, being maybe more generous, maybe you need to be more loving towards somebody, maybe you're going to be more truthful, you're just not quite, you know, you're just kind of on the edge and you, you know what that is, and, and maybe about being just and right and things. What's something you guys can do? just needed to be in the word before that moment. <laughs> and I'm just like, come on people, woo. But you know what? I was like, like we were saying, I was I got in the word and I got my love walk, you know, where it needed to be at that moment, you know. And as I'm driving the rest of the day, did I have issues with people being slow or doing this or that or whatever I thought was incorrect. No, I had the love of God. I had the word in me and I'm like, yeah, you need to go, yes. You know, I put you before me. You know, I prefer you ahead of myself. So yes, you go instead of always being like this. This is how I want it to happen or to go. You know, we we walk, we walk, we talk, we do everything differently when we have the Word of God flowing through us. And you, and I don't know about you, but I can tell the difference when I'm really, really in the Word or just kind of in the Word. You know, you know how you respond to things or how you're you're more. Um, loving with people or where you're a little more like just like her with people you know you know how you are and with kids you know and I'm like my timing with God you're talking about time with God um, you know with kids and family your your time is it's put in other places and sometimes you can think maybe maybe the house needs cleaned or the kids need my attention and you kind of put say well God I need to do this I, I got I got this to clean I got kids I got to do things with and we tend to put those things and we can get very frustrated because we're trying to do all these things where if we just spend time with God he would rejuvenate us and energize us and get us um, to walk in love and then we can work better with our family members we can have that desire to accomplish the things that he's called us to do day in and day out those things are very everyday mundane things whatever it's going to work or whatever it may be he will you know give you the passion to accomplish the things that you need to do um, you know be good stewards of our time that he's given us but it must first start with him giving him our full time and getting in his word and loving him and letting the scripture just change you from the inside out. All right, does anybody else feel brave in sharing anything else? How you can pursue being any of these things further by the king? But you got to live those things to the glory of God too, whatever it may be. 
whether you're cooking a meal or you're just driving across town going somewhere or whatever it may be, we, we, we live lives. It, you know, yes, we're living lives that are holy and pure, we're in the word and things, but we have lives that God wants us to live fulfilled and blessed and have that abundant life. And we can do that in everything we put our hand to. He will bless those things that we do, that we put our hand to, that we people we come in contact with. We use every opportunity to, to give him the glory, to live for him, to show his character, and to show of his goodness. And that should be our everyday lives, everything we do to glorify, reflect Him, and show people His holiness, His purity, His goodness, His faithfulness. That's what we get to do. And He's a holy God. Mario, did you have anything? Say an amen, brother. <laughs> amen. Amen. All right. So all, does anybody else have anything? All right. All right. Well, there are scriptures at the bottom that they have if you guys want to go over them. But um, just real quick, just something that you guys got. Um, I want to know what what stood out to you that you could take home tonight for Kedosh Yisrael, the Holy One of Israel. What's something that you can take? This is praying the names of God. So um, when you're thinking of that, what is something that comes to mind? What is something you got? Sister Heather. To reflect his character. I mean, that, that is a challenge. I think it's a good challenge to have tonight. Have your life reflecting God's character. Amen. Maria. for each of our lives and he 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 loves us enough to say hey that is it you need to get that out or I, I'm gonna push you a little further out of your comfort zone and get you where I know you you can go further than that you know he's gonna do that because he's a loving God and he cares for us and he's got great plans for each and every one of us and so we have to say okay God I welcome it <laughs> it could be hard but it, he's got it's it's good on the other side it is. I'm thankful your heart is where it's at. <laughs> Amen. Anybody else? What's one thing, one thing that you got when you hear of Kadesh Yisrael, the Holy One of Israel? Anybody brave? You brave souls. One thing. Sister Rebecca. treat people like he, um, like we treat him and to love him how he would. Amen. Amen. All right. I think we heard from this side. <laughs> Anybody on this side? <laughs> one thing, one thing. Anybody brave enough? <gasps> Sister Shauna. That's a safe way to right now. Keep your spirit man clean. You can't, you can't interact with them or see them or be with them unless you have peace. Amen. Amen. And yeah, we need that intimate relationship with God. And um, He's holy and He requires that of us. And so we got to have that clean heart, that pure heart before Him. Amen. 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 All right. Anybody else? I will leave anybody out. <laughs> he raised his hands and he's down. All right. Awesome. Well, you guys did fantastic. And. Um, Keep going over the names of God and be praying the names of God and allow it to transform you. And I challenge you this week to get to know a little bit more of God's character and, and you know, let the Holy Spirit lead and guide you and maybe some of the character you know that maybe you're like, yeah, the Holy Spirit's been kind of pointing in a couple of these areas and I need to work on. Well, use this week to work on those areas. Say, okay, God, uh, I... I accept and I am gonna I'm gonna change my ways. I'm gonna allow the 
the word of God to transform me from the inside out and renew my mind. And so I challenge you this week, be more Christ-like and, uh, and get to know his character a little better this week than you did even yesterday, okay? So Lord bless you guys. Have a great week, and we will see you guys Monday and worship team practice tomorrow night at 7. Love you guys. God bless you.